Hello, in this short video I'm going to be talking about the work we've done on linking ITCMF, that's the IT Capability Maturity Framework, and Skills and Competence Frameworks. So the overall topic is enhancing ITCMF to drive organisational improvement through incorporating skills and competences. I've done this work with my colleague Sinead Manan on the research team here. It's been going on for a year or two and in this short introduction we'll explain what we've done and how it can be of value to your organisation. So first of all, I'll provide you with an overview of the project and we're looking at a particular example of ITCMF and SOFIA, that's the Skills Framework for the Information Age, as the example that we cover today. So in terms of the whole issue of linking organisational capabilities with individual skills development, clearly it's important to understand why this is a useful piece of work to do and what the drivers are for getting us to do this. So there's been a recognised need over the last uh, couple of decades to address individual skills and organisational capability in an in integrated and holistic fashion. You can see this in both the academic and the practitioner literature, and it's seen as a non-trivial relationship, as in it's quite a difficult relationship, but it's also an important one to get one right. And the research has no firm conclusions as yet as to the best way to manage this, but it recognises its importance. We've also, of course, been talking to our users, both the ITCMF, and many organisations who use it say it's very, very useful in terms of providing a roadmap of what the organisation needs to do to improve, to give them a clear picture of their future desired state. But they still struggle sometimes with knowing exactly how to achieve this and what practical steps they need to take. Again, talking to our colleagues who use skills frameworks or develop skills frameworks, they are found to be very, very useful in identifying skill gaps and training requirements. But in terms of organisations knowing which skills they definitely need to drive their strategy, and also the problem of how do they actually show that the skill development has resulted in both organisational improvement as well as just that the skills of their people have got better. Has this actually made any difference to how the organisation is performing? So in summary, the research and the practice and the stakeholder engagement on this issue has shown us that it's an important issue to get right. It's complex to get right. And any tools that can help organisations work on this would generally be very welcome. So here in this slide, we've developed a proposed, uh, we've said assumed user journey. Clearly, this would be different for different organisations. This is an overview of how we think people might use ITCMF and skills frameworks together. It's one of the possibilities. So firstly, we'd always recommend starting with an organisational approach. So using perhaps IVI's IT Effectiveness Assessment Survey, which gives people a snapshot of where their organisation is in terms of IT maturity and the key areas they need to improve on. We then provide a range of ITCMF artefacts that can be used in combination to create the organization's improvement plan. For example, we have practices, outcome and metrics that they can use. We have maturity statements that give clear pictures of different levels of maturity at different IT capability areas. So our new approach is also to improve skills frameworks, which means that as well as these organizational issues, organizations have access to the specific skills and competences that, that people will need in order to drive those improvements. Before proceeding further, I'll give you a brief overview of the IT Capability Maturity Framework and how it's structured, as that will help explain how it can be used in practice. So basically speaking, it's a management strategic approach to IT rather than a process one. It has four macro capabilities and also 35 critical capabilities which look at specific domains of IT, management or operations. Each critical capability consists of specific building blocks that give quite detailed guidance on what organisations need to do to manage this aspect of IT. The Skills Framework for Information Age, normally known as SOFIA, has in many ways a broadly similar structure and it addresses IT management though from the perspective of individual skills rather than organisational capability. Again, it's organised through categories which are broader and going down to more specific skills and it also has seven levels of operation. So that level one is the most basic level of skill, level seven is the more strategic mission led. And even in its Sophia Plus add-on has even more detailed practice descriptions in terms of its work activities. It's useful to explain briefly the Sophia levels as these are important both for Sophia and for other competence frameworks. So you can see they start with the level one, follow ending with level seven, which is a senior management role in terms of setting strategy, inspire and mobilize. These have a logical structure in terms of autonomy, influence, complexity and business skills, which depending on where the the description of the skill sits in those four different facets would decide which level of uh, seniority it would be on. We found when working with these two frameworks that they had fairly similar levels of granularity, fairly similar structure in many ways. So they had a broad uh, category or macro level 
and then it would go down to the most detailed level, which describing a practice or a skill in some level of detail. So that was very useful in terms of how we actually went about mapping the two frameworks together. So say we, re we did the mapping looking at the relevance of the skill to the capability through looking at the CBBs and the work activities, the capability of building blocks. So we, we mapped from a fairly detailed level, which was, was more time consuming in many ways, but meant we are very confident of the, the relevance and the accuracy of our mapping. And it wasn't a totally binary issue. So in some cases, the skill from Sophia is clearly directly relevant to the relevant ITC and FCC. In others, it was quite relevant. And for some of the skills, we thought, well, there will be cases in which it would be relevant. So it might be useful for organizations to know about it but it might not be relevant for others. So we've included that, but we've, made it, we've clearly flagged it as being something that is not primary, but possibly worth a look, depending on your individual context. So in the, for each CC, we've highlighted the top three skills, because we think it's most important to present the most relevant information, but additional skills are also available if people want to look into it in more detail. So I hope I've explained enough how you actually did the mapping and the structure of the two frameworks, what it meant in terms of that process. Now we're going to look at, in the next few slides, how do we actually use that information to improve how we work in organizations? So I'll just go back to our suggested user journey, which to briefly recap, would start with some kind of capability assessment to identify strategic priorities and, and weak points and need to work on. Then start using ITCMF artifacts on an organizational level to improve them in terms of processes and technology, and to also look at the skill of the competence frameworks to support implementation of the plan. Some ideas we've had in terms of structuring how that improvement plan might work would be an improvement planning template. So this could be used uh, to get the output from the maturity assessment so people know where, where they need to, to go, um, identify particular pain points or issues that need addressing. And then because of the mapping with the skills framework, could also identify target skills to address problem area and come up with specific actions to be taken. This would provide a useful roadmap for organisations that clearly highlight which issues were organisational in terms of process and technology and which issues were particularly to do with skills and organisational structure. So it's just a way to get started in deciding what to do next in order to get better. Another tool that can be used is the job role profiles. Now these can be based on the ECF, that's the European Competence Framework ICT job role profiles, which are freely available from the website listed at the end of this presentation. These are really helpful in terms of providing perhaps a more concrete framework for action for organizations, because as well as a list of skills, this can be put into a job profile, along with responsibilities, perhaps mission, particular tasks, and some KPIs. So it can help organizations look at who's actually going to do this work, what skills do they need to do, it can provide a starting point for perhaps developing a job advert or developing a training plan. And if you need to reassign people, you can use these role profiles to make it clear to them what new tasks they'll have to do and what skills they will need. You can also use it to help develop and improve your organizational structure. Here's, here's a sample job role profile in a bit more detail. So we picked one here that we think is relevant to the ITCMF for critical capability enterprise information management. So uh, a profile title that is clearly relevant to that kind of capability is a business information manager role. And here you can see that you've already got some useful information to get you started on improving how you could work in this area. A summary statement, a mission, some deliverables, and the main tasks here. And after that, there is the competences. So here we highlighted the need to liaise between the user community and the IS infrastructure. So you're already getting a clear idea of what the main tasks would be and what kind of skills and competences you would need to develop those tasks. Just to re-emphasize that these job world profiles are very much seen as an outline template that organizations need to use and adapt for their own purposes. So that's how they should be seen. So they're not an endpoint, they're just a starting point to get people on the road to improvement. Here's an example of the information assets we also have on our current web portal. So again, the example CC Enterprise Information Management. And um, we've shown the skills that are most relevant from Sophia. Not surprisingly, information management not surprisingly, information management is coming up as the top skill. And we can see that there's other skills that are certainly partially relevant, such as business analysis and data management, and there's other ones which would have some relevance for some organisations. So we present them there in case they um, are relevant to you. Here we can see if you go into that uh, website in more detail, you can get a more detailed description of the information management skill. We have the overall description here, which is level neutral, and then we also include more detailed descriptions at each level. So you, when you see that, you can quite quickly get a sense of 
what kind of level of skill you, that you know you'll need for your organization. So in terms of bringing this video together and looking at the conclusions, IVI has connected ITCMF to skill frameworks to help provide you with more focused tools and methods to drive the capability improvement. So that's the reasoning behind the work that we've done. We hope now that you have a way of assessing your current and target IT capability, and you can also be confident that you have more tools now to holistically drive sustainable change. You can improve the skills of your people as well as your capability for your processes and technology. For more information on anything discussed um, in this video or any other relevant areas around skills and capability improvement, please contact myself, Claire Thornley, and here's the email on my colleague, Sinead Manan. Finally, in this slide, I've just provided some websites that you might want to look at for some further information.